Oh, hi everyone. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. I am in an intense battle of Pokemon, and I don't know what to do against this ball. My moves are, does it matter, does it matter, does it matter, and block. Wait a minute, block, ball, it all makes sense. Why the heck am I even playing Pokemon, yo? I, like, never talk about it on the channel. Yes, another Kirby month where block ball doesn't rank very high. For those of you who don't know, this specific video is a video in a series of many where I rank the any percent speedruns of every Kirby game. If you missed yesterday's video, I recommend checking out that Burger Bonanza, but we've only got one game of the uh, not nothing variety today. And not to say that Block Ball has a super amazing run or anything, but it's got enough going on to where I'd say it warrants its own video. So let's talk about it. Before we do that, though, if you would all be so polite as to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see, I would really appreciate it. See, after yesterday, Deputy Pup has her eye on me for poorly representing what the spirit of the Nothing Burger is about. For my own safety, I'd really appreciate the support. And if you'd like to go the extra mile, you can become a Puptrin on Patreon or a Mempup on YouTube. You get super nifty perks, including early access to all the videos, including this year's Kirby Mind. This video included as well. Special thanks to my head padding Fluffle Fan Puptrins and Mempups, Freakish Uproar, Lydia Scribe, and Velofar. I love you all! Despite what I said earlier, I don't actually have that much to say about Block Ball, at least on the outset. But since this isn't a game I figure most of you have played, given it's old and one of the several random Game Boy spin-offs that just kind of came and went, it, it plays like Arkanoid. For those who don't know what that is, you can see on screen that Kirby's being knocked around the screen by these flippers. You want to take out every block as a ball, a, a, a block ball, if you will, on screen to advance to the next level. You can make Kirby move really fast by pressing the A button to make Kirby go super. I don't like what I do after I get those good head pats. Aside from that, occasionally you can grab copy abilities to help you out. This game only has four, Spark, Burning, Needle, and Stone, but they're very useful for what they are. Spark allows Kirby to destroy any block and not bounce off of regular ones. Stone drops Kirby from their current position to the bottom, crushing blocks along the way. Needle can also break blocks like Spark, but can also attach itself to a flipper at the cost of not moving Kirby. And then there's Burning. The good win! What holds this run back, at least for me, is that Arkanoid is an inherently frustrating game. It's clear by watching people who know what they're doing that there are consistent strats to make this game more manageable, <laughs> or manageable at all, but it's so hard to actually make those strats work. Options like using save states on the 3DS certainly help in terms of practice, but mistakes are too easy to make and too punishing. It's like the opposite of those good head pats. What doesn't help is that, even when speedrunning, Block Ball has a very slow start. Once abilities enter the fray, the game definitely becomes a lot more interesting, but until then, it's mostly just trying to do things quick and getting annoyed when the game doesn't work with you. you know, try not to waste time, don't die, and that stuff. I feel like that applies to every speedrun ever. Except, I guess, the, the, ones, the ones where it doesn't. My puppy! It isn't bad, per se, but as a speedrun especially, it can feel very dry. Like I said before, though, the abilities do make things a lot more fun, even if there are only four of them. They all bring something unique to the table, even if burning is the clear best. Even then, you don't get burning until the late game, so for most of your playthrough, and by extension your speedrun, you're using whatever it is that the game gives you. Spark is a clear second, at least in my opinion, since it's the only ability that doesn't stop your movement at all. It can be a bit scary in casual play, I guess, but when you're going for that fast time and Spark just melts, or... Uh, electrocutes blocks like it's nothing, it does feel really good. Stone and Needle, I feel, aren't quite as good, but they have their uses for sure. Block Ball does have more than just the standard levels, though. For example, in some stages, you can find a Warp Star that brings you to an optional minigame that you can play to get points and 1-ups. I always pick the bomb one. I think it's genuinely funny that Kirby has this expression of a stone-cold murderer as they throw bombs at you, which basically does nothing but make life harder for them. <laughs> I, I'd say it's a tiny brain move on Kirby's part, but as a puppy brain doggo myself, I don't think I have the right to talk. Anyway, I bring this all up because, uh, as I'm sure you've noticed by the word optional, these get completely skipped. 
That's why I haven't shown any footage in the background, and you're gonna have to assume for yourself what a Stone Cold Murderer face on Kirby would look like. It's a shame, since they are fun, but look at it a different way. In order to access these stages, you need to find a Warp Star in the levels that brings you into those levels. Avoiding the Warp Star in and of itself adds strategy, not to mention a lot of tension to a game that, at times, can feel void of that kind of thing. It's a welcome change of pace, albeit a very punishing one. With that, I think I've stalled long enough. Everything I've mentioned so far is all well and good, but the real reason why Block Ball is so much more than a Nothing Burger speedrun, weird thing to say, is the same reason why it isn't a Nothing Burger game to begin with. Well, except for the soundtrack. I, I love that soundtrack. Oh, speaking of getting to listen to the great music as you're speedrunning, that's definitely a plus. But no, the highlight of this game and the speedrun are easily the boss battles. For a basic rundown on how these work, there's an enemy center stage. The boss, I, I figured you would know that part, but I'm looking out for those of you that are dog brain fluffle fans. <laughs> uh, anyway, these enemies, you need to hit a certain amount of times in order to win. That's a very basic explanation of it all, but not only are these a blast casually, they're indescribably satisfying to beat quickly. Even the most basic of bosses, the very first, uh, happy of all things, feels great to cheese through its first phase. The run may make this look easy, and well, it's an easy fight regardless. No way are you clearing it this fast without that certified dairy license of the Chez Variety. The quickies cheese strats apply to every boss in the game, too. What's even funnier than that Cappy kill, though, is how Spark tears Kaboo to shreds. Launch towards Kaboo, you Spark, rinse, repeat. Kaboo can't do anything. It's honestly really funny. If there's one thing I really want to show you guys throughout this month is that speedrunning is like the funniest way you could play any video game, especially Kirby. If there's one thing about the boss fights that I don't like, which is less on the fights and more on the category, it's that you don't get to fight all of them. You see, if you don't clear the borderline for every stage, you... What's that? What the heck does borderline even mean? Good question! Proceed to not explain it because it has nothing to do with the any print speedrun, like a boss! If you don't clear the borderline for every stage, you get the bad ending. Since not clearing the borderline is enough to get an any percent playthrough completed, stage 11, and thus the final boss, King Day to Day, gets completely skipped and ignored. Oh well, it's not the biggest deal in the world, although I would have liked to fight him. And now it's time for... Fluffo fans! It's Claire Fluffo's speedrunning tip by the day! Yay! For Block Ball, I'm going to show a useful strat for, what else, the boss fights. So, if you line up two of the bumpers, I think I've been calling them flippers for most of this video. <laughs> uh, whoops. But, if you line them up just right diagonally and have Kirby hit the edge of the bumper that's closer to the other diagonal bumper, Kirby will be sent towards it. If you do the same with this other bumper, you can stall out whatever the boss is doing and launch your counterattack once you're done. Plot your revenge, genius Fluffle fans that all of you are. <laughs> At the end of the day, Block Ball has a lot of cool ideas that mostly don't translate to a fun speedrun. Yeah, at least for me. The abilities are cool, Kirby is cool, and the music is wonderful. But there are many, many other Kirby games that I would rather speedrun. The bosses are the saving grace for sure, and what elevate it to the status of... Oh god, six from the bottom, and this would have tanked without those boss fights? That's pretty bad. Anyway, there are plenty of other any percent Kirby speedruns left to rank, which also have great boss fights, so I'm gonna get back to those rankings. Until I see you next time, I have been Claire, thank you all so very much for watching, and I will see you around. Bye-bye!